time when the fierce and beautiful land of Allegasia... Aragon narration! Also, Allegasia sounds more like a skin cream than a place where people would choose to live. A young rider named Galbatorix betrayed them. What is with these goddamn names? What happened to simpler fantasy names such as Bilbo, Gandalf, or Luke? Just want to point out that even in 2006, there were video games that looked better than this. The fucking Aragon video game didn't look much worse than this. He crushed all rebellion, including the freedom fighters known as the Varden. Fucking. Our story begins one night. Sorry, Chief, your story began when you started talking, and that was almost two minutes ago. Are we going to see the story or just hear it? Because that's what audiobooks are for, or so I hear. I suffer without my stone. Do not prolong my suffering. Discount Skeletor is definitely phoning this one in, but are you surprised? This guy was in Con Air. If Durza can make fire appear wherever, then why wouldn't he just make it appear in the place Arya is currently standing? Not a f***ing coincidence he's out here night shooting arrows at deer when this ancient whatever decides to leave a memory egg stone thing right here and now. From the guy who wrote Jurassic Park 3. The decision to make this dragon egg look like a blueberry Mike and Ike seems misguided. Not Daisy Ridley because this movie is old enough Daisy Ridley would have been a child, but this chick still looks like Daisy Ridley and it's kind of weird. It sort of looks like Daisy Ridley. I have something. Something to trade. This motherfucking moron is about to trade a dragon egg for some cold cuts. And I'm offended this scene didn't come with any wah wah sound effects or a hilarious oversized hook dragging him off screen. Between this and Assassin's Creed and Dungeons and Dragons, one has to wonder if Jeremy Irons is to fantasy films what Jai Courtney is to franchises. Do you know what I think? I think you're a thief, a poacher. I confiscate them all in the name of the king. Eminent domain. All hail Aragorn, the mighty hunter returns with his invisible catch. Since Roran was back at the homestead sleeping in while well, Aragorn was at least trying to hunt them some dinner, maybe he should quit being such a dick. Being Roran. This goes on for some time. I'd take a hundred sins off right here and now if this egg burst open and he found a good movie inside. Egg knocking. Aragorn. I guess this is as good a time as any to roll the fucking credits. Roran is telling Aragorn he's leaving to avoid being drafted into the army, but Aragorn's face says, I'm gonna have to do all this farm work on my own, goddammit. What many men seek is often right under their nose. This is the medieval fantasy version of wherever you go, there you are. Sister was in a great hurry when she left you here. Besides, had she not, I wouldn't have gained another son. <laughs> Broken homes are amusing. Well, look at the convenient timing of the hatching of this f***ing egg, would you? He only just found it. So a dragon is about to hatch, and suddenly I realize this movie is basically a discount kind of how to train your drogon. Where is it? Okay, this movie with Malkovich, Rachel Weisz, Jamon Honsu, Robert Carlyle, and f***ing Jeremy Irons spent all its money on casting and ignored everything else. Most noticeably, the story and the special effects. And it shows. If he had this trick up his sleeve, why wait until now to use it? Sure, the egg hatching just happened, but the vision of Aragorn holding the egg was from the previous day. When the Varden learn that the legend is real, they will be encouraged to challenge me. Considering it seems like Galbatorix only has one employee, I'm surprised they haven't challenged him already. And I don't care how powerful a sorcerer Durza is, he has to sleep at some point. Where's your mother? Did she abandon you too? Heavy hand is heavy. F***ing gizmo this thing is cute. Must resist removing the sim. Whew, that was close. <laughs> is that supposed to be an actual place or a painting in my desk's office? Did he just create an army out of dirt bats? The time of dragon riders will come again. Prophecies. This scene of teaching the dragon to fly was originally set to Tom Petty's learning to fly, but too much of the budget went to casting, so they turned to Lenny Kravitz, who had yet to fully come into Hunger Games money, and he gave them the empty pockets routine and also asked for too much money. So ultimately, they just demanded the composer score the scene for no extra pay. <laughs> I'd give good money if the Sean Connery dragon from Dragonheart showed up and ate this tiny dragon in a single bite, and then turned to the camera declaring, I'm the last one. One good way to keep this under wraps is to let the dragon fly around so everyone can see her. Not gonna lie, I forgot about the hand burn thing, and never assumed prior that it was magically connected to something. But mostly I'm looking at this shot wondering what the f*** is wrong with Aragon's middle finger. It's not only not the longest finger on his hand, it's actually smaller than the two fingers neighboring it. He has a human hand, but a hobbit's middle finger. He's still looking at his hand. Holy sh**, did this dragon just literally age up four years in a single 30 second flight? The f***? I thought the Lion King log was some bullshit. I have waited a thousand years to hear your thoughts. Dragon stalking. Candle. 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 Get out! Whose house? Brom's house! I always say, better ask forgiveness than permission. Should've been this movie's f***ing tagline. They killed Captain Turples! I have to warn my uncle! It's too late! There's nothing you can do! And he served his purpose in the movie already, so hopefully no one will miss him. 
uncle. Go away! This movie's Encino Man moment rings hollow, both because we know that we'll reconcile soon, and because the actor playing Aragon is f***ing terrible at acting. Who are you? He's clearly a discount Aragorn, Aragon. Duh. Also, considering how much exposition Brom has given so far in the film, it's odd he can't answer a simple f***ing question. That's the spirit. One part brave, three parts fool. And all part f***y movie. The Razak kill. Mercilessly. The Razak? The Nazgul called, and the Witch King wants a word, bitches. Who are the Vada? Rebels. So, Rebels, then? This movie is Star Warsing so hard Percy Jackson just f***ing decided to sue them. Also, eloquent exposition exercise between equines eviscerates every attempt employed toward equanimity. Zephyra, can you find us? I never left you. Facebook. Muscular. Graceful proportions. Talons nicely curved. Legs a bit thin. John Lasseter meets a dragon. The Vardan need a rider if they are to defeat Durza and the King. A rider will live on if his dragon is killed, but if a rider dies... This movie is 43% rules. Not Sauron shows up to check on the not orc's progress, and can I go home now? I want to go home now. I don't want to be here. I know I said I'd finish the whole thing, but now I just want to go home. Urgles. Urgles in the Razak instead of Nazgul in the Urukai. Jesus, instead of Aragon, you should have just called this Xerox. Hey everyone, come quick! Sucky Morpheus is fighting Sucky Neo! Also, why do so many movie mentors take such gleeful pleasure in hurting and embarrassing their students? Batman Begins, Matrix, Karate Kid, there's a clear pattern. To teach a lesson, this guy threatens to drop Aragon into a creek that is three inches deep. Couldn't the movie have filmed this on a real cliff and have him dangle dude over a huge drop into a raging river? If you're gonna have the threat dangle moment, why set the scene at a bend in Bob's backyard creek? With any luck tomorrow, by the end of the day, we will have slipped through Darrett unseen. Blah, bitty, blah, blah, bitty, blah, blah, bitty, blah, 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 Riding on a beach, horse riding on the terrain, horse riding on the moors. We'll leave the horses here. Keep Safira close. How the f is Safira even hiding this well? She's a giant fing dragon. I mean, we're not on Godzilla hiding in Manhattan levels, but we're pretty fing close. But you have been long awaited by many races. Really? Because to me, he just seems like a kid who was in the woods one day and an egg appeared. If Roran had been the one hunting and found the egg, wouldn't he be in this scenario? Or what if Sloane had traded the piece of steak for the egg earlier? Seems to me Aragon was just in the right place at the right time. Brissinger! He yells Brissinger here, and it makes his arrows do amazing sh Many scenes ago, he saw her Jeremy's iron say Brissinger to his fire starting kit and flame up here. My point is, why in the name of any kind of f***ing common sense would Aragon think in this moment of life or death to shout the word the creepy guy once said back in the forest? The power of Brissinger is so strong it makes Aragon pass out after saying a word one time. Magic comes from dragons. But why? How? Magic must be your last resort. F***ing why though? Before you cast a spell, you must learn the ancient language of the elves. He's already cast a pretty massive spell, so check your grammar, dog. He can't never if he's already ever. Know the word, and you control the thing. Know the word, and you control the thing? This is some discount Mike Brady version of Obi-Wan. Other spells, if you use them before you're ready, will kill you. Great! Thankfully I have months to study, right? Not so bad at all. The bad guys give the good guys time for this. It feels like this movie should spend a lot less time on these bonding and training scenes, and a lot more time on developing Galbatorix as a villain we should give two shits about Aragon defeating. Feel how she moves, Aragon! How she turns! Does Brown think Aragon can hear him? Is Aragon actually becoming a better rider here? It's a serious question. I have zero clue whether this is supposed to be considered a success, and I doubt any of the other viewers do either. How the f is he keeping pace with them? That's one of the biggest movie lies ever, man. F this guy and his f***ing lightspeed horses. Exactly how did Aragon know how to activate his predator vision? And why the f*** does riding a dragon give you predator vision? Several seconds of an apparent fight scene edited by someone at gunpoint who would be shot if they didn't finish before the roller coaster stopped. Your irresponsibility nearly cost Sephira her life. She's a sentient f***ing dragon, dude. She said with pleasure when he told her to die. Let's spread the blame around a little bit here, can we? Dragon rider. Dump dump dow who the f***? Am I kidding? That's not a surprise. This movie feels exactly like what it is. A hasty, low-budget adaptation of a post-Lord of the Rings movies fantasy novel written by a 15-year-old kid. Where's your dragon? Dead. Well, I should definitely keep listening to you about how to train my dragon, right? Bring me the boy, my son. Bring me his blood. Actually, you said... Bring me his head. But semantics. Angry bad guy kills a henchman to show the other henchmen and the audience that he's super serious about his orders being followed and seeing his mission completed cliché. Congratulations. You've just been promoted. Angry bad guy that just killed a main henchman to make a point, then declares another nearby random normie henchman to be the new hench leader, cliche. I tire of this. I'll bring the boy to me. Well, Thanos, why'd you keep sending henchmen in the first place to do a job that was that important? F***ing hell. This movie is filled with so many moments of why the f*** didn't you just do that in the first place? Oh, sh He's dreaming about a Lindsay Sterling video. Where are you going? To find Arya. The girl from your dream? Immediately? As the Varden now, wait for you. This movie is basically doing some kind of wackadoo twist on the pronoun game with this Varden 
alternatively using it as the name of a place and the name of a people. I forgot what it means to be a dragon rider. And Aragon knows all about it after saddling up for all of ten minutes. Well, Sam, I guess we need to find a way into that. What's that? There's no Sam in this movie? Not even a golem? Guess I'm on my own. Those walls hold death. Not today. Not for us. Because I had a dream about it. No one will be seated during the Return of the Jedi portion of the movie. Marmor. He's learned a ton of magic spells off camera, and it's frustrating. I knew you were young, but even then I expected someone a little more. Well, more. You and me both, babe. <laughs> That is the most hilarious Ex Machina I have ever f***ing seen, man. <laughs> this Dragon Ex Machina doubles the Ex Machina power of this scene. It's like Mario eating a power-up mushroom and then immediately eating a fireball flower as well. Can you carry three? Not for very long. F*** off, you pussy. You're ginormous. I suggest you leave quickly. God, how many Ex Machinas did you write into this scene? Like, all of them? Also, oh good, let's introduce Garrett Hedlund now that there's only like half an hour left in the movie. Guess we'll learn more about him in the sequels. <laughs> sequels. Das is dead. Did you pierce him through the heart? Seems like that would have been good info for Aragon to have before they entered the castle. Why is pale? How does he know all these spells? <laughs> well, at least you guys aren't trying to hide or anything. I've seen a lot of dumb things in movies. I've watched every f***ing Transformers movie more than once, and I f***ing went to opening night to watch a movie with Carrot Top, but somehow Jeremy Irons having a death scene while riding a dragon might be the dumbest. The shade has poisoned her. I feel like I should care, but since I know nothing about this character, other than she transported a dragon's egg what seems like ten hours ago, I just don't. I need to get you to the Varden. How do I find them? Why not just give him f***ing directions? This mystical shit is infuriating. Dude is leading Aragon to a place he can't find on his own, but Aragon is literally in the lead in every single one of these traveling b-roll shots. We'll have to go by foot from here. Yeah, the horses could never have managed this perfectly flat section of trail. Oh, balls! They've been captured by the faith militant sons of the upside down cereal bowl hats without borders. Of all the luck. The task was simple. Bring the boy to me. Oh, great. Another the task was simple scene. Also, the boy was literally here and very recently, so technically Durza did his job. This is really on Galbatorix at this point. Also, is Galbatorix like the master on Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Can he not f***ing leave this one area? Because this is the only place we've ever seen him in the entire movie. As long as I am king, disloyalty will be punishable by death. Death. This is the most Uwe Boll movie ever not directed by Uwe Boll. And the dragon walks off to make sure Arya gets medical attention, and all I can think of is, thank god this network of caves is comprised of all caves tall, wide, long enough to accommodate a goddamn ginormous dragon. He is the son of Morzan, the traitor. Dum dum dum, wait, f***ing who is that again? Son doesn't choose his father. True, but Kim Jong-un can say the same thing. I've no time to take chances. Maybe, but you also need all the help you can get, so maybe give Murtaugh at least one chance. Why me? I'm just a farm boy from Carvel. You mispronounced Tatooine. I need to know, Sephira. Why me? You choose a leader for his heart. Great! Skip! As one! Earlier you told me she was too young to breathe fire, and that was like maybe a couple of weeks ago. She should not be breathing fire right now except for plot convenience. Also, how did she not just roast the f*** out of Aragon? I mean, he's standing literally right there in the fire's path. Swords, arrows, fire, excitement. Time to return the favor! To the CGI company by not billing them for this scene that ultimately looks fake as <laughs> Discount all the things! God damn it, this movie rips off so many other better movies, I'm just adding 40 cents for the audacity of it all. What is that thing? Dark magic. Oh. It's so dark and full of bad CGI, I can't tell what's happening. I already know who wins, we're literally just wasting everyone's time. I'm losing strength. Thing I said 20 minutes into the film somehow makes it into the climactic dialogue. They both survived this crash landing that would have crippled the Starship Enterprise. Galbatorix will try to avenge this defeat. <laughs> you guys thought, while making this thing, that you were going to get to make a second one. And that's hilarious. It's easy to make jokes about this movie. It's pretty terrible. And ignored a lot of what made the source material popular. But in case you were worried there were no consequences, this is the only movie that its director has ever directed. Someone gave him his shot on this movie, and he stepped in it a little bit, and he hasn't ever directed directed a feature since. That's damage. I feel bad for the guy, if I'm honest. This movie's process and or reception f***ing ended this guy's directing career. No movie is so bad its director should be barred from ever trying again. Well, no movie except Maximum Overdrive. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. As you might have heard, we recently announced the inaugural year of Sin Week. It's coming up soon. Holy sh Sin Week is an e-convention that you can access at all levels of patronage. We'll have five Cinema Sins videos that week for members, panels, a live podcast, and much more. Oh, you have no idea! <laughs> 
And if you're signed up at the top tier, you're eligible to attend Sin Week in person. Hang out with Chris, Jeremy, and the Sins gang in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. Ray Ray took his ass to Nashville. You'll be digging up a top golf. You'll even be treated to some great food. Mmm, face is so scrumptious. If you haven't already, sign up today at patreon.com slash cinemasins. Join the club. We accept the one of us. Kill the gobble one of us. <sighs> why, oh why didn't I take the blue pill? Plato? Verata? Mm -hmm. the king's enemies now that he's God. Did you pierce him through the heart? Once again, things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! You know nothing, Jon Snow. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Every wife had seven sacks, every sack has seven cats. Every cat has seven kittens, kittens, cats, sacks, and wives. How many were going to St. Ives? I will merely confine myself to remarking that a no will be regarded as a declaration of war. Get out! Too bad we can't stay, baby. Toothless. Down. Gently. I've seen things you could never imagine. I have seen that'll turn you white. <laughs>